Okay, so one fix for common pool resource problems is to rely on the private sector. And this is fairly intuitive when you think about this idea of excludability and rivalry. The whole reason we have um, common pool resource problems is that they are non-excludable, but they are rival. So if you think about a private good, a private good is excludable and rival. So we're already 50% of the way there with the common pool resource problem. We have the rivalry. The only thing we're missing is the excludability. If we can turn a common pool resource thing that exists in the world, if we can change it from non-excludable to excludable, then it becomes a private good, which then means it can be bought and sold in a market and it can, it's, be, it's beholden to the forces of the private sector and the invisible hand and capitalism in general. So one solution to common pool resource issues is to make the non-excludable excludable and somehow block access to these things. Um, so if you have a commons, you can put a fence around it and then charge people access to it. And now it is no longer a commons, um, it is excludable, and it is a field with a fence around it. And at a very basic level, that is easy to do. You just um, remove, um, or make it excludable. Um, lighthouses, um, we talked about this a couple sessions ago, they're typically seen as a um, stereotypical public good um, because they're non-rivalrous, like one person looking at a lighthouse does not prevent other people from using that same lighthouse and they're non-excludable. If you see a lighthouse, like there's no way you can pay tickets to see the light. Anybody out in the ocean can see the light. Um, but what we talked about a couple of sessions ago was that um, economic historians have found that um, old lighthouse port towns found ways of levying taxes on the boats that docked in those ports um, to then um, essentially pay for the use of the, of the, of the lighthouse. And so you get a somewhat excludable um, lighthouse situation, which makes it more of like a private good. Um, and so again, like that's that's kind of the the private sector solution here is somehow make it so that the non-excludable thing is excludable. Um, you can do this in a couple different ways. Um, one is to just um, assign property rights to stuff. You assign rights to anybody who's interested in using the commons, or and then you can parcel it out to different people. So if you have a community of farmers and they have some common field that's getting overused, you essentially lay out a grid and say, you get this chunk and you get this chunk and you get this chunk and go. And then the incentive to overuse disappears because they're now internalizing the externality of overusing um, the commons. And so they will use it at a proper amount. Um, and so the incentive to overuse disappears. Um, another alternative, um, this is the cap and trade system that we talked about a couple sessions ago. Um, you essentially assign the right to infringe on the common pool resource problem. And you say pollution is acceptable at this level, you must buy a permit to pollute, um, but you're essentially excluding people from doing it, but you have this permit system to do that. Um, which sounds great, um, but there are some issues with this. Um, that we talked about a couple sessions ago. Um, Cosian bargaining is hard to do, um, especially at a large scale. And so if you are excluding the commons, um, you have to um, parcel it out and give property rights to people, which then means everybody has to negotiate um, for what they want and what they want to have access to. Um, what happens if people get bad parcels? If you have this, this big commons and you divide it up into like 16 squares. One of the squares might be in the shade and be super muddy at the bottom of a hill. Somebody has to get that square. They're going to have to negotiate to not get it, but there's going to be a loser in the negotiation and you're going to get that. Um, is that fair? And what does that person do? Do they need to get more money to offset the fact that it's a bad plot of land? Or do we just say it sucks to be you? Um, there's no guidance here. Um, what about things that you can't parcel out? We can't parcel out the air. We can't parcel out the ocean. You might be able to parcel out a forest, um, but even then it's fairly easy to, to over forest because forests are big. And so you can easily just start going across the border a little bit of your parcel and taking more. And then other people will also take more and it spirals out into a commons problem again. Um, this is a Pareto efficient system. Um, 
it's great for everybody, but it's not necessarily fair. Again, people are going to get the bad parcels. And if they're not great negotiators, they're going to be stuck with it. And even if they are great negotiators, somebody is going to get the bad, like the short end of the stick here. And there's no guidance in this world of private solutions to common pool resource problems to how to, uh, for how to address these inequities. Um, and that means um, there will be natural power imbalances and people who have more power in society will um, benefit more from this parceling. And um, so it won't necessarily be fair or just or equitable.